Hello, Greg from Balloon Market here and welcome to BMTV. Now this week we've got another, a, a transatlantic guest, if you will. Yes, we are talking to somebody over in Florida and it is Joette Giardina from the Balloon Co from ballooncoach.com. Joette, hello. Hello, Greg. Thanks for having me. No worries. Thank you very much for, for uh, agreeing to, to do this. Now, there are, I should say to everybody, there might, we're going to try and not have any talking over each other because of a bit of a delay. So um, I might pause, you might pause, and don't worry, everybody, that's intentional. So first of all, Joette, like I say, thank you very much for doing this. I think what I'm interested in doing, introducing you to the BMTV Nation, if you like, is um, find out, well, first of all, how, introduce yourself, how you got into the industry, how long you've been in the industry, and how you've gone from being a balloon artist to what you do now, really, is, is what I'm very interested in, in hearing. So, so over to you. Great. Well, I started in the balloon industry full time in 2003. Um, my daughter was four years old, and I had had this thought in my head that I was burnt out being a social worker and I wanted to have more time with my family and with my beautiful little daughter. And a friend of mine owned a balloon business locally, Party People, and I would purchase balloons from her for time to time for my church events. And I was known for always putting events together. And I had been selling party supplies online through a company called 1-800-PARTY-SHOP. It no longer existed, um, but it used to be kind of like being a Mary Kay consultant um, where you're selling <laughs> makeup, but instead you're selling party supplies. And I had gone to a convention and saw how awesome balloon decor was. They had made a palm tree, they had done the magic arch foils and some other designs. I'm like, man, I wanna do that. But I didn't wanna compete against this other person that I had hired from time to time. So I was renting a helium tank from her. I said, if you ever need help with your business, I'd love to work with you. Um, and two days later, she offered me her company. Wow. <laughs> So they say, put out into the world what you want. <laughs> and I did. I put it out there that I wanted to be a part of her company. And the next thing I know, I was um, now the owner of Party People. And we called it Party People Celebration Company just to change it up a little bit. And I worked with her for two months and on the job training. And then she sold me the company. And it was the best thing ever. She... Um, said don't open up a storefront because she had had a storefront and had closed it down two years previously when her lease doubled and she said with what we specialize in which is doing large-scale decor arches columns things for races schools she said really working from your home or from a warehouse space will allow you that flexibility to meet your clients needs and so i heeded her advice and i moved everything from her home to my home and uh, the funniest part was you could tell how relieved her husband was to have the balloons out of their home because <laughs> as we were moving things out, he honestly had a sledgehammer and he was tearing down the wall in their basement to make a living room out wow. of the area that she'd been using for balloon storage. So <laughs> he's like, the balloons will invade your home and I'm glad to see them go. So it was kind of interesting to see what had progressed with her business. And um, over the years, I ended up building a 600 square foot warehouse in my backyard. Yeah. So, um, because it had overtaken my family <laughs> and my family was tired of balloons. And so we built that extra space that's air conditioned in our backyard. And it was a great way for me to expand the business and, and not have my family walk into balloons on a daily basis. But I definitely went through several years of our house being wall to wall balloons. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. That's a really interesting story because. I, I've not heard of people buying a business before and getting into it that way. And I mean, that, that meant, I guess, you were learning a lot from this other person's experience, you know, don't open a shop front and all that sort of stuff. Um, and so you hit the ground running, I guess. So you had a list of customers. Uh, it's just quite an unusual way for definitely here in the UK. There's not very many people that do that. Most people just start small and slowly build up their business, which is exactly what we did. I mean, what you described there every, we started with a balloon in a box sort of service uh, online. And we would Monday to Friday, our living room, our conservatory was full of balloons. And then come Friday afternoon, it was all put in the in the garage and then it was brought out again on, on Monday morning. So um, yes, I can I can definitely um, 
yeah, sympathize with, <laughs> with that for sure. So you, that's how you, you got the business. I take it you, you yeah. grew the business and then you did the same. You, you sold your business, didn't you? Yes. So what I did is over the years, she told me that, Joette, the number one thing you've got to do is go to training. She's like, be able to expand your knowledge and be able to expand the customers. You've got to go to training, find out what's trending and then come back and offer it. And so I heeded that advice and bought in 2003, 2004, I started going to classes and I met some of the most amazing people in the world um, because I have found that the balloon artist and the balloon business owners are just this really cool group of people. And I would travel and go to different places and I won some awards and then I started being asked to teach. And what happened is after you start teaching your emails and your Facebook, now that we have that, you get flooded with questions of how did you grow your business? How are you marketing? You know, how are you staying so busy? And my husband finally looked at me and said, Joette, if you're going to spend this much time away from your business and from your family, you've got to be compensated for your time because it's not fair to us and it's not fair to your business because when you're on the phone or on the emails answering somebody else's questions to help them make money, you're losing money for our family. And I'm like, oh, that's a really good point. And um, so that's how Balloon Coach became um, what it is because in 2015 uh, or 2014, somebody, Jonathan Gerber, came up to me and said, Joette, thanks for helping me on this project today. Um, he had seen my hot air balloon recipe and he's like, can we turn that into an orange? I've got this corporate client that needs a huge orange. So uh, I went with his team to Orlando. We used my recipe to make an orange. And um, when we were done, he said, if you ever want to sell your business, I'd like to buy it. And then he looked at me and he goes, did I just say that out loud? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, I hope I did not offend you. And I'm like, no, actually, I've been praying about it. I've been wanting to transition from a balloon business owner to um, helping out the industry, but I need the right person to take over my business who can handle my clients because my clients became my family. I mean, I've served them for a very long time and they expected excellent customer service. And so I needed to make sure whoever took my company mm. would be able to offer the same service or better. And uh, so I had watched him purchase some other companies here in Florida and do really well with it and build a nice team. And so I felt like he was the right fit. And I just said, I need to stay on as your marketing manager, though I this company is my baby <laughs> and I want to be a part of it. And so it was a great um, relationship. I still serve as marketing manager in a very small, limited way where I help out with social media. I still go to some of the networking events here locally. And then our office manager in Orlando goes to the networking um, meetings there. And then new parts of our staff are now taking over a lot of the social media and things that I used to do. So yeah. it's been a really fun transition to still be part of a company that does over a half a million dollars in sales um, versus what wow. I was doing at $150,000 a year from home. Um, so it's been a neat opportunity to be able to go from that doing it by yourself. I hired a few people to work out of my warehouse. And then when he purchased it, being a part of a larger team and just being able to see how those dynamics work, it's been really a neat journey. And I love what I'm doing now. It's amazing to help other people step out of their comfort zone and do things that they never thought they could do. Because people in our industry don't talk about money a lot and don't realize, oh, there are businesses that make 100000 or 200000 or a half a million dollars or like uh, David Mahoney in Texas, over a million dollars a year in sales. But for so long, when you would go to training, nobody talked about money. <laughs> they would just talk about the balloons. So that's kind of why I, I started the coaching is to help people really hear the real ins and outs of the business and that it's not a fairy tale. <laughs> yeah. I, that. yeah, I think that's really fascinating because it's almost like things happened at the right time for you. It's, it's very serendipitous. You, you wanted to buy a business, a business came along, you wanted to move your business on so you could do more of what you wanted to do. And then that happened. It is very interesting that you, you talk of that because I think that happens in, in so many ways and we, we might not even be aware of it, but I think things do happen for, for a reason. We could get very deep or religious or whatever you want to call it, talk about the universe, but um, I don't particularly want to do that. But I think it is funny how when you want something to happen, quite often it, it, it does happen for you. So are you, are you still part of the, the business at all in any way? Yeah. So with party people prior to COVID, <laughs> I was working six days a week. He had, um, Stuart Davies had traveled from the UK to come be a part of our Balloon Boss Summit mm -hmm. in um, 2019. And when he went and looked at our warehouse, he's like, 
why aren't you opening up the other side of this, Jonathan, where they've got a new retail space available? Why aren't you expanding your business and having a retail store? And um, Jonathan said, well, actually, I was thinking about going into that space. And so right then, while Stuart was there, he picked up the phone, the realtor came, we went and did a tour of the space. And Jonathan said, the only way I can open up this retail store is, Joette, if you're willing to help out with it, because he was so busy with the decor side, because we party people services a lot of the corporate clients in Orlando for conventions and so he would have to be with the crew with that and he's like so I would not be able to physically be in the store if you're willing to help with that and train staff we can do this and make the expansion and I said yes and then we <laughs> started we opened it up in 2020 we did a huge ribbon cutting a week before shutdown and we had this huge party we invited all the chamber there in Auburndale um, brought in a bunch of friends, the event planner that helps me out with Summit, um, and other people came. We had amazing balloon decor, and people thought it was actually a venue. They're like, oh, so you guys rent this space out? And Jonathan's like, no, there's pipe and drape hiding all of our stuff. Like, this is where we work. Um, but people, because he decked it out so great with lighting and beautiful balloons, they thought it was a, a venue. Um, and so, like I said, a week later, <laughs> we all went home. And so what happened over this last year is, uh, or and a half now, I guess, I would stay active on networking online. All of our local networking groups went to Zoom meetings. And so we were still networking and talking about what we could offer, um, but doing it online and then still putting up the social media pictures and things like that. And I was doing that from home. But what happened is Balloon coach and our Balloon Boss Mastermind program expanded and grew because so many people were like, Joette, what we used to do, we can't do anymore. How are we going to market? How are we going to survive this? And so what happened with me is I needed more attention to my clients. So I let um, Jonathan know, you know, I want to make sure your staff are paid and that they're taken care of. And so that as we go to reopen, feel free to put those people into what I was doing. And then I will always support you and kind of oversee things. Um, but rather than coming back to the store, give that those hours to the other people who need that because ballooncoach.com has expanded. And so that's kind of where we're at. Um, I still get messages from his office manager from time to time of like, hey, where do I find this? What do I do? And then I help out um, with some of the social media and still connecting with the people that I've known since 2003. Um, but I'm not actually going into the store anymore. Yeah. So it's kind of a, a unique thing that because of social distancing, it really showed me that what my passion is, is totally helping support our industry to grow. Yeah. yeah. That's a really interesting, again, really interesting story of how that you've sort of got the balance there of, of leaving one, going into the other. But it is definitely a transition, isn't it? That's really, really nice to have that, that balance. So now with ballooncoach.com, what, what exactly, I mean, do you have worldwide clients? Is it mainly in the US? Is it where people are here in the UK? Tell us a little bit more about ballooncoach.com. Yeah. Sure. So with ballooncoach.com, a lot of people don't realize that we have an online program that's called Balloon Boss Mastermind. And when they hear that word, they're not really sure what a mastermind is or what would be behind the door. And so what happens with mastermind is people come in and we have what's called group coaching. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started, I thought my one-to-one -one coaching was going to be the number one thing that people would want. But at a hundred dollar an hour price tag for some people, it was just a hard for them for them to figure out if that would be beneficial for them. And um, I, my actual first eight hour client was from um, Australia. <laughs> and so I was doing one to one coaching for eight hours. And my husband's like, who wants to talk to you that much? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but what we found is that by doing the one-to-one -one coaching, people would ask me a question on how to do something. I would then challenge them to take certain growth steps and do them and then check back with them the next week and how they were doing. And what I found is as more and more one-to-one -one coaching clients came to talk to me, I was telling them the exact same thing. And I was like, okay, this is getting really redundant <laughs> to say the same thing over and over again. Why don't I put it into a group coaching format where everybody can go in and access the information that they need and then we can just answer and problem solve things as a group and then have that energy and that dynamic because a lot of times if you're working on something by yourself, you're not going to make progress because you're going to hit an obstacle and you're going to feel alone. So by doing the group coaching concept of online where we have three live webinars a month, 
where we talk about something and then at the end we break into discussion groups. So if there's a certain thing that people are facing like um, a struggle with outdoor decor or that they're trying to go into a new market and advertise, they can break into those groups and have those conversations. And now that momentum within our group coaching helps you keep moving forward when you feel stuck. And when other people share their problems, you're like, okay, I'm not the only one going through this. And so for me, I found that that group coaching has been most beneficial for everybody because they get that energy of other people. And um, so within our program, you have access to downloadable templates. You have access to all of my past webinars since 2015, hearing from over 40 different instructors worldwide. And we do have people from the Netherlands, from the UK, from Australia, from Canada, and the US. Um, and I've had other people um, that pop in from time to time and ask me if I do things in Spanish and I don't, I'm not bilingual. So um, anybody in the world who can speak English and understand it uh, is welcome to be a part of the program. Fantastic. Yeah, I think it's great. I'm, I'm a big fan of training. You mentioned training earlier on, big fan of coaching. And I, the way I've always described the training in general is that it gets you from A to B, but it gets you there instead of this much time in that much time. And I think coaching is exactly the same, but on steroids, you, you just, we've, we've used a coach over the years and it just really, really helps. It really does help. And it gives, gives you accountability. You've got to be accountable to somebody else. And it might sound expensive, you know, hundred dollars an hour, but if, if you take six months to learn something and you learn all of that in one hour, that hundred dollars yes. all of a sudden feels very, very inexpensive. And I think that's how you've got to look at it. It's quite hard. I understand it's quite hard when you're, when you're small, when you're starting out, that seems like a, a lot of money, but it just gets you to where you want to be much, much quicker. And um, I, I love that you're doing this because it's, it's so niche really, isn't it? Because you're not just a balloon a coach, you're a balloon business coach. So you understand everything, every aspect of what people are going through. So that's, that's fantastic. So I, I want to ask you what, you, you said you get the same questions again and again and again. What, what, what uh, say three pieces of advice that you would give any balloon business just starting up? Okay, so three pieces of advice for any balloon business starting out is get this book. <laughs> the E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. Yeah. So I know you and I had talked about this before. The E-Myth Revisited, why most small businesses don't work and what to do about it. Especially in the balloon industry, most of the people who come into the business do not typically come with an MBA in business. They don't come with business experience. They typically are people who are very creative um, and people that love that feeling that when you deliver the balloons and people are over the moon going, oh my gosh, we didn't know you could do with this with balloons or wow, you made my grandmother's 80th birthday amazing. She felt so appreciated that day when she walked in and saw these beautiful balloons. We love that adrenaline rush. We like that kudos feeling. And so to think about Oh, I'm supposed to be a balloon boss. I'm supposed to manage other people. I'm supposed to have to figure out a schedule. I'm supposed to keep records of my money. That doesn't excite most okay. balloon professionals because that's not why they got into the balloon industry. And so with this book, it talks about going from being a technician where you're working in your business and being the only one that can produce the balloons to being able to step back and become a manager and becoming an entrepreneur and understanding that real money and the longevity of your business and for you to be able to continue to have a substantial income, you must have somebody else in your team. And that might be that you have somebody answering the phone or that you have a bookkeeper or that you have somebody that goes and does the strikes at the end of the event and pops the balloon so that you can be sleeping. Um, but the number one thing that I made the mistake of when I started in the balloon industry was thinking that I could do it all on my own. Mm -hmm. And so I faced burnout until I got other people on board to do the things that um, I should have had from the beginning. So when you're talking about people saving money from coaching, that's what I try to explain is if you come into Mastermind for one month and just learn some of the base tips and hints and then go run with it, great. It's not a contract, just stay in for a month and go. But what happens is if you stay stuck in that technician role, you're going to burn out and you're not going to serve your family. And so many people get into this because they want time with their family. And instead, they've created a really tough job 
rather than an awesome business that can make money even yeah. when you're not there. So um, the second tip I have is that you need to write your goals down. If you don't know where you're going, you're never going to get there. Mm -hmm. And you, you talked about with my story about how just everything kind of fell into place. Well, my background is I have a degree in recreation and leisure studies where I used to teach adventure-based counseling where I put people up on ropes courses and put them up into trees and they would be on belay, you know, in a harness and they would have to jump off a platform and I'm there to catch them. And that's a lot of trust. <laughs> and, um, and it's a lot of, you know, facing a challenge and just going for it. And so if we don't write down what we want with our business, we often aren't going to be willing to take risk or face a challenge because we don't remember why we're doing what we're doing. So I always tell people to write down your goals. And then the last third thing is you have to have a positive mindset. And if you are a person that you know when you wake up in the morning, you typically just want to throw the blanket over your head <laughs> and stay in bed and say it's going to be a bad day, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. And so I always say you have to be willing to believe that the good things are out there and that anything is possible with balloons. And I've been so blessed to see that. Mm -hmm. I see the people who only need to make an extra 500 bucks a week to be able to pay for something for their kids. And that's totally cool. Um, to the yeah. people who want to do over a million dollars in business so that they can just go and be with their family and let other managers take care of the business. No matter what you want with your business, with the balloon industry, you can make it, but you have to believe that it's possible. Yeah, yeah. No, so those that, are my three tips. No, that, they're great, three tips. I mean, that, that book, The, the E-Myth, uh, not the revisited one, I looked at the original one, I don't know, 10 years ago, something like that. And uh, I love it. I think the example in there, if I remember rightly, is a baker, and he's a fantastic baker. And they're just talking, it, it, everybody says, you, you're such a good baker, become a business, do you have your own business, why are you working for somebody else? And then he goes from working his, say, eight hours a day, being a fantastic baker, to still working his eight hours a day, being a fantastic baker, but needing to do another eight hours a day with the accounts, with, with everything else, the, you know, the marketing and, and all of that. And uh, it just, it's a real insight. And I, I, I I think it's something that people miss. I think everybody starts out very small. You've got to do everything to start with when you're literally starting out. But as soon as you have some extra cash, rather than going by in the flash car, then you employ somebody and then keep doing that. And I, I'm, a, I'm a great believer in that. And the being positive thing, I think that's, that's absolutely key to being in business. If you're going into business, whatever size you intend to be or you are, um, if you're not positive about it. And things will be hard. You will have ups and downs, but uh, you have to be positive to get through it. So, and what was the middle one? What was the second one? Um, so yeah, it was read the E-Myth, write your goals down, and then positive mindset. Goal. Yeah, yeah, writing your goals. What is it they say if um, you don't know where you're going? Yeah, how are you gonna get there? That's what you said, isn't it? So, and you know- Exactly. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's, um, Richard Branson from Virgin, I've mentioned this uh, normally when uh, at the beginning of a year, if I'm doing a show at the beginning of a year, Richard Branson believes in actually physically writing down, don't do it on a computer. It's apparently there's something yeah. in your mind that the physical yes. act of writing gets things into your head stronger. So um, yeah, there are three really, really good tips there, Joette. Thank you. Thank you for that. Well, I, I, I find it fascinating. I, I think I could talk to you for hours and hours and hours. Is, is there anything um, you want, anything else you want to talk about? Because I, I've asked you to, to show us something and you're going to show us something, a, a tip rather than a, a design, you're going to show us a tip. But right. is there anything else you wanted to talk about now? Anything else you wanted to tell everybody about uh, ballooncoach.com or is there anything, yeah. anything else? Cool. Yeah. The number one thing is if you haven't seen our programs, I encourage you to go to ballooncoach.com. I have a free blog on the website. I do have a YouTube channel, um, Balloon Coach, Balloon Boss. And I also have an old YouTube channel, so we're kind of revamping things. But we've done a lot of free webinars over the years where I've had different guests talk on topics that are there. But the other thing is, is just if you're looking for something just to help motivate you, encourage you, I encourage you to come kick the tires. Try out our mastermind program for one month. It's not an obligation. Don't like it. You can leave, <laughs> grab what you need and go. Um, or I have people who stay with me for years.
years. But the other thing that I do offer is every year in Orlando in November, I do Balloon Boss Summit. And the Balloon Boss setup is that there's a small amount of attendees. For 2021, we're only having 100 attendees and we have 18 instructors and mentors on the team. So what happens is when one instructor's up on the stage, like this year, one of my favorites is Dante um, from Qualitex. Um, he is got a retail space that in 2020, he did over two, I'm sorry, over 600,000 in sales from his retail wow. store in the midst of the shutdown. And that just shows that no matter what, <laughs> You can face challenges and keep going with balloons. And so I'm excited that he'll be able to talk to us not only from the past being a decorator from his home, but now how he took that leap into having a retail store and then being able to expand his staff in the midst of a crazy time. And so just that inspiration of setting up systems. And for him, he's like, yes, I can make beautiful, huge balloon decor, but what really makes him the bread and butter is the columns, the arches, the marquees that are kept at a basic level that anybody on his staff can make and deliver. And so I just love that in our summit, it's a time that you get to actually hang out with the instructors, have meals with them, sit in a round table and talk about those business tips that often get missed when we go to the large flashy conventions. And I'm a proponent of those too. I'm a sponsor for the ones here in the US. And so I love going to any type of training that there is out there. And so the number one trip, even if you don't come and learn from me, do your research and hang out with one of the amazing mentors in our industry and invest in yourself because when you invest in your business you'll see it tenfold when you actually take action on what you learn and there's always a golden nugget even if it's a basic course and you've been in the industry 30 years you're always going to get some kind of golden nugget from any training that you take so that that's my main thing is i I see too many people thinking YouTube University is the way to go. And like you guys do an amazing job here on BMTV giving really good quality training. But if you want something that's consistent growth, you need to invest in some type of program that's gonna help you keep moving forward rather than just trying to do hit and miss questions all Absolutely. around the internet. Yeah, yeah, I, so. I, I agree. We, we, we love doing BMTV and we love having people like yourself and other um, professionals in the industry come and help and, and show things, but I'm a, big big fan of face-to-face uh, -face training it's a shame covid has has uh, affected that but that's starting to come back now here in the uk i'm not too sure what it's like over there in the us but a big fan of it because like you say i mean we had we did a qualitex fundamentals i think it was um back in 2019 and dr bob i'm sure you've seen dr bob he's been around for years and years and years and he came along to that and it, he was learning something new there just meeting other people and 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 talking to other people so um yeah absolutely uh, totally agree with you well well thank you so much for that now you've got a tip that you want to share with everybody yes what is this tip? So my tip is gonna be talking about what's called H taping. And it's a way to take a foil balloon and attach it to a pole, attach it into your garland of balloons. Um, but so many times when we're working with balloons, we just wanna use the tip to try to tie it into something. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we need to be able to put it in on the side of the balloon. So one of the things is because of outdoor, it's summertime here in Florida, uh, is I wanted to show with balloons if you're going to be taking them outside, you want to do what's called a pinch test. And that means you want to be able to grab onto this balloon so that there's room for expansion when you go outside. And then if you leave the tail down until you do your installation outside, when you get outside, you can then put a little bit more air into the balloon with your hand pump to make it fully inflated. But I have had balloons this loose go from indoors and then go outside where it's 30 degrees warmer and the heat of the air expands the balloon. And I know we talk about that a lot of times with helium expanding, but air expands also. So if you wanna keep your foils from popping <laughs> when you're taking them outside, go ahead and under inflate them when you do this H taping. And so what H taping does is just gives you an attachment point. And sometimes you just need it in one space and sometimes you need it in two. You take an uninflated 260, and then typically I'm gonna do it in the colors of the latex that I'm tying it into, or the color of the stand I'm putting it on, and then you're gonna tie that knot. And this just makes it kind of like a rubber band. It makes it nice and flat for you to easily tape. And then what I do is I take my balloon, and my favorite tape that I typically work with 
is the Scotch brand transparent Scotch tape or just a basic packing tape. The thing I don't like about packing tape is how thick it is, right? So with, um, I wanna show you guys this holder real cool, um, quick. Sometimes um, people like to work with this tape dispenser so that you've got the packing tape and the transparent tape all in one space. It's nice and heavy, so you can just pull on it rather than trying to juggle it while you're handling it. Or with the transparent scotch tape, when I'm going on a job site, I might just take it in this regular desktop. Um, and it's just easy to pull off and use. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do at first is show it to you guys with yellow um, tape so that you can see it. Because if I do it with transparent, you're not gonna be able to see it. That's a good point. So what you're gonna do is um, I wanna tie this around a pole that's gonna go up and down here. So I'm gonna put my balloon on here flat. And again, this would be transparent tape, not yellow tape. It's just for you to be able to see it. Okay. And you're gonna make it go straight down. So that's your first line. It's the middle of your H. And then you're backing it up right underneath the balloon. And this is what creates your H. So, and I know it's not very pretty because I'm doing it upside down, but it's to give you the idea. So that now you've created an H, that you've got your attachment point. What happens is so many times when people tape, they just put one piece, and when you go to pull on this, it's just gonna fall right off. So by doing the H, it backs it up. So again, it's not very pretty, but I'll show you what it looks like when you do it with transparent tape real quick. Um, just so that you can see that people aren't gonna see what's going on. Again, you flatten it out. You tie your knot, and then when you put it on here, the reason I like using the transparent scotch tape is it's just easy to work with and it's thin, and it disappears into your balloon. So you're putting it on once, and then putting it where you back it up, right where that attachment point is, so that when you are outdoors, or if you're tying it into latex, when you're stretching out this it still holds on nice and tight so the other thing is is if you're putting this on a pole like a lot of people have been doing yard art now this allows you to tie it onto your pole and you're good and what i'm going to do is just show you how now after i tie it in is when i'm going to inflate the balloon for whatever my temperatures are because sometimes even indoor spaces aren't well air conditioned it might be different than your home or office that you're working in. And so obviously I wouldn't have H tape on both sides. No. <laughs> um, but if you're working with something like a word, like happy, and you're wanting to tie this into your organic arch or into your garland arch, you would just want to tape in a couple of points so that it can stay in. So I probably tape on both the H and the P and have it in two places to tie in. So it's just a really great technique because so many times I see people saying, oh, I'm just gonna use a bunch of sticky double-sided tape and, or glue dots and stuff, and that, that's just a pain. Yeah. <laughs> when you're tying it in, especially for outdoor, if you're transporting things, by tying it in, it just makes it more stable. I see too many people trying to think that adhesives are gonna work for them, and their adhesives are um, affected by um, temperature changes and wind. So by having that where you're actually tying it into something, that's part of being a professional. So you make yeah. sure that it doesn't fall anywhere. Yeah. Okay, fantastic, thank you. Um, we, I have seen that before, I'll be honest. We've seen it before and we have used it here on BMTV, but never in this way. So never seen people putting it on foil balloons to then attach to a stand. So I think it really, uh, we've had bubble balloons and attaching, having an attachment point on there to attach something else. But I guess it's just such a versatile technique. You can use it really to, again, to make good quality pieces of, of artwork that uh, you, you can sell and move around, I guess, put them in the back of a van and all of that. So, fantastic. Well, well, thank you so much for that. Like I say, Joe, I think I could just carry on talking and talking and talking, but I, I know Alex is looking at the back of the camera and he's, he's he, I know, I, he, he might as well be saying, get off, Greg, get off. I'm only joking, Alex, I'm only <laughs> joking. Um, but uh, as a guest on BMTV, you get the honor of asking the question of the week. Now, um, it's really for everybody out there. They can answer, make comments on Facebook right. and on YouTube. Do you have a question you would like to ask everybody? 
Yeah, I think my question is gonna be, have you ever thought of yourself as a boss? Or do you only see yourself as a balloon artist? Okay. And just to kind of be honest with that, because many people, they're like, I'm a balloon artist, and they take very great pride in that, and that's the persona that they want. Um, but I challenge you that if you are that balloon artist, consider possibly what it would be like to step into the role of a balloon boss. And so I'd love just to see the answers of, you know, when you talk about yourself, do you consider yourself a balloon artist or a balloon boss? And it'll be interesting to see how many people have thought about that other concept or if they really like that balloon artist role. Good question. Good question. Thank you. So the question of the week is, are you a balloon artist or are you a balloon boss? Leave your comment down below on Facebook and on YouTube. Joette, thank you so much for doing this. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you all the way over there in Florida. And um, thank you everybody for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you've not subscribed, please do hit the subscribe button on YouTube and the little bell icon and you'll be notified every time we upload a new show. Stay safe, stay happy. See you next week. Bye. Bye.